Hi guys. It is shaping up to be a somewhat pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on uh, Wednesday, November 27th, 2019, I believe, here in the heart of Texas. And this is Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles with my little sidekick, Sancho Panza. Uh, it's doing what I do every day uh, before I head out to the Harry Butts supermarket to go check in with my fellow uh, clueless uh, moron consumers getting ready for the big feast tomorrow. Just uh, checking in with the mainstream media today to see how the mainstream media is chronicling the collapse of civilization and the planet uh, here on this nice fall day in the closing weeks of 2019. And we're just going to look at two stories. And I'm going to let you draw your own dots between these, between these two stories as somehow between all of the Black Friday uh, news stories <clears throat> actually managed to dig up two uh, little hints at reality right here from good old Reuters News showing up inside Yahoo News this morning. Creeping, love that word, creeping silent crisis seen menacing world's crops. This is a short to the point story. Uh, <clears throat> a creeping silent crisis is menacing the world's food supply as water shortages could jeopardize up to 40 percent of all irrigated crops by the year 2040 a U.S. think tank said on Monday. I love that term, think tank. Erratic rainfall caused by climate change also threatens the water supply for a third of crops that rely on monsoons, said the World Resource Institute. This is Ruger Hofstede. Uh, speaking for the World Resources Institute, quote, <clears throat> humankind is not very good at acting before crisis happens. We are really good at crisis, ma crisis management, but that's very reactive. Yes, I can think of all sorts of uh, ways that humankind is really good at crisis management. I think Hurricane Katrina is an excellent example of looking at humankind uh, being good at crisis management. But anyway, I'm getting off track as I tend to do. Uh, returning to uh, Mr. Hoff, Hofstay, quote, This is a creeping silent crisis, and we would like to ring the alarm bells before it's too late. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Scientists say water supplies, and this means global water supplies, are threatened by many factors, including climate change and mismanagement, but farming, farming, otherwise known as agriculture, is one of the largest factors using 70 percent, 70 percent of our fresh water. On Monday, the think tank launched an online tool called Aqueduct Food, which maps water risks for more than 40 crops, including bananas, coffee, soybeans, and cotton. Among irrigated crops, it found nearly 67% of wheat, 
64% of maize, which we call corn here in the U.S., and 19% of rice could be in areas with extremely high water stress by 2040. These three crops together account for more than 40% of the world's calorie supply according to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Urgent action is needed, be it to improve irrigation and soil, uh -huh, better crop choices, and less food loss and waste, it said. There you go, and uh, that is the total story, and we have 42 reactions to this story from a planet of going on 8 billion. And next to that one, we have this one. Again, you can draw your own dots. This coming from the French news service, uh, instead of Reuters, <clears throat> in the U.S., in the U.S., you know, this is the French News Service looking at the United States, climate anxiety churns up a psychological storm. There you go. In the melting Arctic, communities are racing to maintain their way of life. In the rising Pacific, residents are sounding alarm bells and... In Rhode Island, Kate Shapira and her husband are not having a baby. Yes, fears about climate change are prompting worldwide action. Oh yes, uh, fears about climate change are prompting worldwide action, but one knock-on effect in the United States is mounting anxiety about everything from plastics to class-based environmental disparities. Shapira, a 40-year-old senior lecturer in the English department at Brown University, is addressing that unease in a number of ways. The decision not to have children was not just about her concern for their future well-being and environmental degradation, she explained, but also about not wanting, quote, my sense of responsibility to the world to shrink down to the size of one person. Close quote. Uh, I've read that sentence several times. I have no clue what that means. Anyway, Shapira also says she has likely taken her last flight. She said she was troubled that people were treating her climate fears, quote, <coughs> like a personal individual problem she said, and she wanted to see if that was actually the case. So, in 2014, Shapira started setting up a climate anxiety booth in public spaces such as farmer's markets. It was a bit like Lucy's psychiatry stall from the beloved comic Peanuts. Her booth... Uh, literally has painted on the front of it, Climate Anxiety Counseling, Five Cents, the doctor is in, uh, welcoming passers-by in Providence to talk about their fears. As it turned out, Shapira was far from alone. In fact, about six in ten, about six in ten Americans now say they are at least somewhat worried about global warming, and 23% say they are very worried, according to a survey 
uh, conducted by Yale and George Mason Universities. Anthony Lesserwitz, director of the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication, said Americans can be broken into six categories based on their reaction to climate change ranging from alarmed to dismissive, which of course would be the book hermit camp. Okay, this is survey uh, study leader Lieseritz, quote, the common wisdom is that only upper middle class, white, well-educated, latte-sipping liberals care about climate change. It turns out that's not true. Okay. None of the six groups is majorly driven by only one demographic, he said, with the exception of the dismissives where, quote, well-educated, conservative white men reign. They are, according to uh, this fellow, they are, quote, dramatically different in terms of how they perceive the risk than everybody else, close quote. He said, thanks in large part to a worldview that we call individualism, which is particularly pronounced in that one group. Of course, that same demographic also happens to control the White House. Half of Congress in many of the nation's richest corporations, such as the fossil fuel industry. As the world's top experts climb in airplanes to head to Spain for the UN Summit on Climate Change opening on Monday, Americans must deal with the idea that President Donald Trump withdrew the U.S. from the Paris Climate, Record, Climate Accord. <clears throat> For Lise Van Susteren, I, I have heard of this one. We have to get Lise Van Susteren on the show. What do you guys think? For Lise Van Susteren, a Washington-based psychiatrist who has been studying the mental health impacts of climate change for 15 years, refusal to recognize the potential hazards is common for what she calls, quote, people who are trying to deny that they too are vulnerable. I actually have no hesitation in saying that on some level, I believe that everyone now has some climate anxiety, Van Susteren said. <clears throat> Psychological responses to climate change, such as conflict avoidance, fatalism, fear, helplessness, and resignation are growing according to a 2017 report by the American Psychological Association and whoever Eco America, I love that, Eco America is, and they coincide with an array of physical health impacts such as asthma and allergies. <coughs> I love this at a happy hour for environmentalists. <laughs> at a happy hour for environmentalists in Washington, Alicia Cannon, who works in environmental policy lobby lobbying, was asked whether she was experiencing any climate anxiety at a happy hour for an environmentalist. Her response? Oh God, yes. I think a lot of people that work in climate 
feel some kind of climate anxiety because it is such a large scale issue and it is overwhelming and you feel that it is overwhelming because of helplessness, the 23 year old said. And by the way, I had the great pleasure and honor of interviewing uh, uh, a 23 year old Asian woman living in Singapore last night and you can look for that interview with Sarah Lim coming up in a few weeks to hear what is on the mind of 23 year old Asian women living in Singapore looking ahead uh, to the next 20 years. Anyway, back to Van Strusen. According to Van Strusen, such feelings can lead people to question whether their individual actions are meaningful in light of the vast nature of the problem. <clears throat> Quote, What we do individually is counted collectively. Close quote, she said, indicating that one person's behaviors can help establish consequential social norms. I have no idea what that means. Again, I really need to get uh, Ms. Get Dr. Van Susteren on the show. Uh, Debbie Chang, age 43, who organized a group counseling session on dealing with climate anxiety on the National Mall in Washington. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people uh, hanging out at the National Mall uh, are, are just uh, overwhelmed with climate anxiety, has also decided not to have children and tries to follow a zero-waste policy. Chang keeps chopsticks in her purse to avoid single-use plastic utensils, carries a handkerchief to substitute for paper napkins, and brings a steel container with her to restaurants for any leftovers she might want to take home. Chang said, until not that long ago, it was difficult to find information on climate anxiety, climate grief, climate despair, and climate counseling. Now, she said, quote, there's more. People are starting to realize it's a thing. Yes, people are starting to realize that climate change is a thing. So, uh, I guess that's a step. <laughs> anyway, I I'm going to wrap up today's mainstream media chronicle of the collapse because I need to uh, head to Harry Butt's grocery store to join the uh, the throngs of clueless morons uh, visiting the supermarket uh, where you know that's where food comes from uh, the that's where the global food supply they were talking about in that first story comes from is the supermarket so I am going since I do not have uh, since I did not plant my organic vegetable garden this year, uh, I am going to have to join the legions of clueless morons uh, in the Harry Butts supermarket to find my collard greens and smoked ham hocks to share with my clueless lovable friends at our Thanksgiving get together tomorrow and I highly suggest you get to your local supermarket 
while you still can. Bye, guys.